All right, we are ready. I'd like to pass this time to Pastor Arukia. Amen. Praise God. A very good morning to everyone. God is good. Amen. Uh, I thank the Lord that I again got an opportunity to share the Word of God. At the same time, uh, I would like to thank um, AGPC uh, Committee, the chair, our Chairman, uh, Pastor Theo and the committee. They're really working hard. And also MUFW working hard together and uh, doing great things for the nation. Praise the Lord. So uh, today I'm going to just uh, share a sh uh, uh, short uh, devotion message on divine encounter. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Um, one, uh, if, if a person have one encounter with the Lord, that can do many things and, and even can change our entire life. Even we see in the Bible, uh, Paul, Saul became Paul, one encounter and the Lord touched him. Uh, when he came himself, the Lord Jesus came himself and touched him when he was going to Damascus to persecute the church. And one touch has changed his entire life. And the word that Jesus asked him, why, why do you persecute me? That word has really touched his life and changed his life. And uh, <clears throat> today, uh, many, many Christians, they want to pray one time for certain thing and they want the Lord to answer the prayer. And same time, uh, uh, they, they want, I mean, uh, they want the prayer to be answered. And if the prayer has not uh, been answered, then uh, they will stop and they feel discouraged and they stop praying. In Psalm chapter 27, verse 4, uh, this is one of my favorite verse in the Bible, says, King David is telling, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Let us pray. Let us pray for a moment. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time. Lord, we stand before you and we, we, are, we are in the midst of your presence, Father God. You're always with us, Father. Lord, we acknowledge you and we invite you, Lord, and you will come and reveal your loving kindness to us, Father. And even today morning, Father, speak to our hearts, Lord. Lord, let us see through your word, Lord, the powerful things that you're going to speak through us, Father. Bless us, bless each and every one that came for this devotion. And Lord, let this time be a wonderful time for us in your presence, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Okay. Uh, King David is a man. Everybody, everyone knows that he's a great man. He wrote the Psalms, uh, many of the Psalms that he has wrote. And uh, he's a man that... He really seeks the heart of God, and even God says he's a man after my own heart. So he says that I will dwell. One thing, one the main thing is that he will dwell in the house of the Lord. Not, I mean, not 24 hours. That means his whole life, he, the most priority thing is that he will spend in the presence of God. And he will listen to what God is speaking. And same time, he will bring his intercession to the Lord, uh, and so on, you see. And um, <clears throat> that's a divine encounter. Uh, each and every time David has a divine encounter, he will bring and uh, sing it out to the people. And many of them are touched by God. Praise the Lord. And uh, today, uh, just, I mean, praying one time to get the prayer answered, I don't think we can have a real encounter. And same time, only interceding and only uh, praying for one another, we, will, we may not have the real encounter. Encounter is something that uh, there's a covenant, covenant, covenant relationship, both sides. Not only we we, we uh, intercede and we pray for one another, at the same time, we listen to God. Uh, uh, I think uh, we are all living at the very end time. Very end time, we can we know what is going on in the world every day. Uh, we are hearing uh, 
good things and we are, we are also hearing more bad things, uh, disaster and so on. So at the end time, God wants to speak to the church. He wants to have an encounter with the people of God. And uh, this is the time that we have to be sensitive and we have to open our ears and we have to see what the Lord is really doing in the last days, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. So today, uh, <coughs> the encounter started from the Garden of Eden. Everyone knows that. And the relationship with man and God start from the Garden of Eden. And until now, until the end of the day, it's going to be the same. So we are created to be a supernatural people. And uh, we are the people uh, more than any other, any other religion in, in this world because we believe the unseen and, uh, and we also know the unseen is more real than even the seen. That's why, that's why Paul says in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, the last three verses that uh, what we see now is temporary, but what is not seen is permanent and it's eternal. Hallelujah. So uh, a divine encounter is something that we are relating to the unseen and we are believing the unseen is more real than what we are seeing now. Even in our nation, even out of our nation, we see things, uh, many uh, I mean, things that does not uh, uh, align with the word of God and does not really make us happy. But that is not real, the Lord is telling you today. The real thing is the things that what God is doing in these last days among the churches and among, among the children and people of God. Let us see a few, uh, a few encounters uh, that... Uh, that, uh, that the servants of God has read in the Bible. There are many encounters we know. Let me see the few encounters. Uh, the, the few are, I think it's, it's quite main thing. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 8, we see that the uh, encounter that Abraham had with, uh, with the Lord. I mean, before that, he had a few encounters. And here, uh, in chapter 22, and the Lord is telling Abraham, uh, Bring your only begotten, uh, your only son that you left, you left, and sacrifice for me. And uh, verse verse one says that we need to verse one says that God tested Abraham. God tested Abraham. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, uh, and he said, uh, Abraham said, Here I am. If the Lord said, then he said. Take now your only, take now your son, your only son whom you love, and go to the land of Moria and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. This is something so divine, and uh, and uh, and uh, a father with only one son, Isaac. It's a very difficult thing for him to, uh, I mean, agree to this. But yet, but yet. He obeyed, he obeyed. Verse 18 says that he obeyed uh, what he obeyed to the voice of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So what in this testing, we all only, uh, most of us see that God tested Abraham, Abraham's faith. But behind that, that's a purpose of God. Uh, every testing that you and me go through sometimes and most of the time, and there is some purpose of God it will be revealed in the midst of the testing. So God wants to reveal something to Abraham even for these days for you and me to live a life, uh, I mean, more uh, uh, joyful and even to have a great intimacy with God. So God revealed to him uh, through the testing that he has to sacrifice his only son. This is a very difficult thing. But what Abraham's mind was, I think, in chapter 17, when we see in chapter, uh, Genesis chapter 17, when the Lord appeared to Abraham and he says that, uh, Abraham, I'm the, I'm the almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And, uh, and I will make, I put my covenant in you, you and me. And from today, from 1 to 5 says, 
From now on, you'll be a father of many nations. You will not be called Abraham, Abraham, but you'll be called Abraham because you'll be the father of many nations. So in, chapter, in verse 3 says that I will make a covenant with you between you and me. So, so Abraham saw the covenant. Covenant is something that whatever belongs to Abraham is belongs to God. Whatever belongs to God is belongs to Abraham. So Abraham with that mind, he began to go and sacrifice his son. And God saw him and God said, hold, do not lay, the, lay, your, uh, lay your hand upon him. I have seen you, that how much you have loved me. And one thing, Abraham sacrificed his son there, uh, began to sacrifice and God stopped him. Another thing what we saw is that God wanted to reveal, the, uh, reveal Christ to the whole world. Uh, and that revelation is a great revelation even for today, for us to be blessed. Amen. So, uh, so, so in verse 18, we see here, here that uh, <clears throat> in, in, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. My voice. So, uh, in, so in, 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 in another words, God is telling that you did not withhold your son. So now I do not withhold my son, Jesus. I will send him to the world and for the world to save and he will die for the people. And from there, the whole world, all the nations will be blessed. You see, this revelation uh, uh, to Abraham, even it is it was it's a blessing to the whole world. This is a spiritual encounter that I'm, I'm trying to I'm talk, uh, talking about. And a second encounter, you see, after, after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had a second, and Jacob had an encounter with the Lord. I mean, early he had, some encounters and here he is meeting Isa his uh, I mean his brother he's coming back with his family he went he went to his uh, his uncle's house in Lebanon and he stayed there for many years in 20 years and now he's coming back with his wife and children and this time he really afraid to approach his, his own brother because what he has done was really not good and now he come to, he's approaching his brother and before that, he said, and he and he put away his children's uh, eleven children and his, his two wives uh, in a brook. And now he met God, and he wanted to have a have an encounter with God. And he met God, and in the whole night he was with God, and he never left God. He caught out, he caught all of caught all of God, caught all of God. I don't know what kind of encounter he had. With the Lord, Jacob had with the Lord. I mean, today, today uh, in our life, uh, we we only uh, pray one side. You know? uh, the other day, uh, when I was talking in my church, there are there are there are few uh, elderly elderly uh, uh, mothers over oh, seventy over years. They used to pray for hours, 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 and they will like, they will come and tell me, Pastor. I'm praying for you and your family. I wake up in the morning at five o'clock, four o'clock. I'm praying for you and your family and many, many pastors and so on. And one day I prophesied to one of the ladies, uh, the elderly, elderly mother said that uh, you will see one day Jesus will appear to you and he will come and talk to you. Yeah, you are interceding for, for many people and you are interceding for me and God will have an encounter with you just wait and see uh, from now on and told to the few even to the few uh, uh, elderly mothers praise the lord we always we are on one side we want to intercede we want to pray yes very good but at the same time if we have an encounter with the lord and that encounter will bring the revelation to pray specifically for things and change change the the the, 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 the nation the life and even the countries can be changed through the encounter of God. Hallelujah. Here, Jacob had an encounter with the Lord. And uh, and he don't want to leave the Lord. And the Lord said, leave me. And he, the Lord beat him on, on his hips and, and said, okay, now what's your name? But Jacob wanted to be blessed. Bless me, Lord. Let me see. He, he want a word from the Lord. And, and, he, and, and, and he, he asked the name, what's your name? And he said, Jacob. And from now on, verse 28 says, then Jacob said, uh, 
No, that's Jacob was telling his name, uh, asking God's name. And here verse uh, 27. So he said, what is your name? He said, Jacob. Verse 28 said, and he said, your name shall no longer be, be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed, prevailed. That means, that means you have, you have won. You have, you have heard the voice of God. You have touched the heart of God and you have heard the voice of God. And God was changing his name from Jacob to Israel because he wanted to form a nation. And that nation is going to impact the whole world. From that, from that nation, from Israel, 12 tribes is going to come. And these 12 tribes are, is going to impact the whole world. And the people around them, the Gentiles around them who sees the people of God, Israel, holy people, they are worshipping the holy God, they are worshipping the true God. And all the Gentiles know that Israel's God is something different, it's a different God, and their God is holy, and the people are different. Hallelujah. So every encounter that the church will have, you and me have, can bring to the to the Gentiles or non-believers to see who God is in our life. Amen. So from there, from from uh, Jacob started nation Israel, and today the Christians and Israel become one body because of Jesus died on the cross. And we see that in Ephesians chapter two. Okay, the third the third encounter uh, which uh, Isaiah Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6, and we all know that after Uzziah, the king Uzziah died, and now Isaiah went to the temple to wait upon the Lord, and suddenly he saw, he did not see his whole life, he was, he was, he was a prophet, yet he did not see the glory of God, and there he saw the glory of God, and he saw the seraphim, the angels, were worshipping God, holy, 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 holy. And that time he got a revelation. The angels are too holy, and God is holy, and the angels are worshiping God holy, holy, holy. The, the angels are more, even more holier than me. And he saw his life and began to see that he is undone. He is a man with unclean lips, and he lives among the people of uncleanness. Amen. That was a great revelation. Uh, instead of doing a great work for God, and same time, we must know our walk with God. So uh, uh, Isaiah began to know where he stands and how his life is going on, how he's walking with God, and how his spoken word is. is. And he's saying that I'm a man of unclean lips. That means he realized that he is a sinner. He is still in sin. He is not, uh, I mean, uh, he's not capable for, for the work of God. And the Lord said that, <clears throat> and the angels took, the, I mean, coals from the from uh, from the altar, from the altar, and he placed it upon on the tongue of uh, Isaiah. The Bible says that uh, when one of the uh, seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal which which had been taken with the tongs. With the tongues even the angels did not take the hand because the the, the, the coal was so hot you yeah, know was so hot and he's and he put in put uh, put touch the tongue of isaiah is it and isaiah did not feel the pain of the coal but yet uh and i believe that you know christ died on the cross for us you know and uh he was judged the father was uh, sent him to be judged on the cross for us so uh, he, our our sin was been been been. Uh, I mean, judged by the fire, fire uh, that, that was upon the judgment was upon Jesus Christ, and uh, and Jesus Christ's body was not burned, but the sin of the world and our sin was being destroyed. The body of Jesus Christ. So here we see uh, before Christ came, there was Isaiah was there. So the coal was taken from the throne of God and placed upon his tongue. And his entire life was changed. Amen. And, and behold, this has touched your, your lips. Your iniquity has been taken away, and your sin is purged. Praise the Lord. That was in the Old Testament. But now, your sin and my sin has been purged. 
the cross of Jesus Christ. So now we live a, a sin-free life so that now we can anytime we can stand before God. Nobody, no Christian, born again Christian can say that, oh, sin is blocking me. I can't pray and I can't listen to God's word. Nobody can say that because our sin has been dealt on the cross. So we can go boldly before the throne of God according to uh, uh, Hebrew chapter 4, verse 6 says that come to me boldly, the, the, the Father is inviting to the revelation of, of the servant of God, Paul. Come to the, to the throne boldly and, and come and, uh, I mean, place your intercession and come and receive the mercy and uh, mercies of God at the time that you need. So we all have the boldness to go to the throne of God because Jesus has paid the price for us on the cross. Praise the Lord. The first revelation that uh, Isaiah had was for his life. So every individual of us, we, we must need a revelation for our life. Where are we standing in Christ? And uh, how are we working with the Lord? The second revelation is that the great divine commission was revealed. Praise the Lord. So this was the more, this was the, this is very important in these last days. In these last days, we are seeing, we, we, everyone, everyone is seeing uh, something is lacking in the church where the early church was going through, through a great power, preaching, healing, everything was there in the early church. People are multiplying the early church, but now something has been stagnant. There, there is, uh, there is uh, uh, less people getting saved and less miracle signs and wonders are, uh, uh, has been happening in the church. So uh, God, God was asking uh, as Isaiah, who, uh, who will go for me and who will take, uh, go for us? I mean, the Bible, here we see, verse 8. And I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? First, the Lord said, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Go for us. Then I said, here I am, send me, Lord. So Isaiah's second revelation was the revelation of divine great commission was being imparted to him. Today, in, uh, in every individual life, we have a great uh, work to be done is that preaching the gospel and 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 bringing safe all the non-believers and even those who are backslided, we have to bring them back to Christ. Hallelujah. So he had these two encounters for his life and for the heartbeat of God to reach out to the whole world, taking the good news and being an example, witness, because Acts chapter 1 verse says that and when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he will empower, empower you and he will empower you and you will be a witness for me, the Bible says. Praise the Lord. So today you and me, brothers and sisters, ready for the great move of God. And God really want to have a divine encounter. Recently, uh, last week we have finished our Easter. We have celebrated our Easter. Good Friday. It was very, I know every church has been really, uh, they celebrated. And, and I feel that the power of God have touched many lives. And the 40 days, Many, many churches in the front, uh, the mainline churches and many churches have, has really fasted uh, 40 days uh, with one meal, two meal, uh, vegetarian fast, you know. Even, even the, even the frontline churches like uh, Methodists and Catholics and, uh, and so on, they are still following that method. And uh, some uh, more spiritual Pentecost churches uh, have left that. Uh, last year, uh, this year, uh, last month, and we, last year I've told the congregation that we want to follow that every year. Every, every uh, Easter comes, we want, to, we want to go 40 days of fasting and prayer. Which is, so we did it 40 days in our church. 15 people regularly come and we prayed. And, uh, and I, my heart is that, Lord, we just we do not want to pray. We want to have an encounter, a visitation from you. And, and the Lord has done many things. People have seen angels. And people had uh, uh, saw uh, the angels are worshiping God and so on in our worship. And that is not really enough. God wants to do more in our life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the last thing is that we see that uh, conclusion is 
Mark chapter 3, 13 to 15. Jesus is calling the 12 disciples and he, he calling them to do, he was really revealing the heartbeat uh, to, to them. First he said that, and they came to him, verse 14, 14, and he appointed 12 that they might be with him. First thing, that he might send them to pray. Second thing, and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out demon 13. The first thing is that he, that they might be with him. That is the, that is to have divine encounter each and every time. You see, when Jesus was living in this earth, and, and in John chapter 5, verse 19 says, and, and, and many other verses says that he, he has a close relationship with the Father. Morning, early morning, a relationship in the afternoon, and we have a relationship in the evening, and a whole night he was having a relationship with God in, in certain times. And each and every time he had a relationship with the Father, he said that what my Father does, what I see my Father doing, I, that's what I'm doing now. So each and every time, and I believe Jesus has an encounter with the Father, and he brings the revelation. Once he brings the revelation, he preached the revelation to the people, and then he healed the people. That's the same thing that God wants you and me to do the same thing. So today, uh, uh, we see there are many Christians that are really following God, and there are many also, who want to do the work of God, but they don't want to be with him. I mean, they want, they don't want to have the encounter with him. They don't want to, they, they don't want to be in the presence of God, waiting upon the Lord. What is God, the Lord is telling for the church, for their life, even for the nations, and even for the whole world. I mean, even God can speak through us in Malaysia, for the country of America. You see? So that's a God. The God of here and the God of far is with us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I believe that uh, today's church, <coughs> the standard of today's church is that Mark chapter 3, 13 to 15, if we, if we stand on that promises and we can do great things for the Lord in this last days. Praise the Lord. And God is so loving. He wants to reveal more things than we want to intercede anything for the Lord. He wants to reveal to us more things. He wants to speak to us, praise the Lord, uh, in a specific way. We pray in a specific way, in, in, in a specific timing, and we can, we can see a great change in our lives, in our families, in our church, and even in our nation. God bless you all. This is a short message I have to, uh, to share with you all this morning. I thank the Lord that God has ministered to us, even to me, and to, and to each one through the word of God. God bless you all. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Yes.